Hello and welcome back. My name is Dr. Domico O. Cunningham, better known as Dr. Media. So I wanted to talk about something that I ran into with a bug um, with FreeNAS 11.2. So this past week, I actually had a almost catastrophic failure of my FreeNAS system. Um, I had a drive that needed to be to need to be replaced. Actually, it is this pool right here, this PHX Media pool um, drive. One of the drives in here was dying. It was it was at the end of its life. It was it was you know it was conking out, and it needed to be replaced. So the thing about these two pools, so I have a PHX Media One pool and a PHX Media Two pool. Pool One has four discs in it, but it's still only um, a RAID Five or a ZFS or a RAID Z Five. So it's got four discs in it, but I can only lose one of those discs and be able to resilver uh, my information. And I'm okay with that um, because what is what's happening right now is that I'm actually I know I talked about it before, but I, I finally pulled the trigger. I'm in the process of building a second FreeNAS box, so I will have a backup to this box. And I and as as you start to put more and more important things onto your free NAS box, things that you really care about and that you don't want to lose, you might want to think about having a backup of some of those precious files. Now, I have a bunch of movies on here. I, I actually have all of these DVDs. So if I need to re-rip a movie, that's not a big deal for me. But if you were, if you had, you know, photos or something on here and you lost your RAID array, and you lost, you know, you had it in RAID 5 and you lost two discs, like two discs were failing, then you're kind of screwed to a degree, unless you can get those discs in um, one at a time and, and get them repaired. Um, so anyway, this, this, um, this pool here was degrading. So I had to put another drive in. When I did that, everything fi went fine, resilvering went fine. Um, and then a day after that, the USB key, because usually when you do a free NAS install, it's installed onto a USB key. Well, the USB key died, and this is the second time that this has happened to me. The reality of it is, is that USB keys are, that's what they're meant to do. They, they are not a, they're a finite, they're not an infinite, but they're a finite storage medium. So at some point, they, it's gonna die. So when that happened, um, everything was, was gone, right? The pools are still there, it's just that I didn't have access to FreeNAS. So I downloaded FreeNAS again, I downloaded 11.2, and what I did was I bought a SSD. So in, the, in this machine, I actually have a SAS controller. And if you're familiar with, with just regular um, serial, like a, a regular SATA drive, a SATA drive and a SAS drive are very similar except for the connector. Um, SAS drives are usually used in more of the enterprise environment. So I have a SAS connector. Now SAS connectors are really still kind of really cool because you can get a SAS to SATA connector. Um, so that's what I have. I have a SAS card and the thing that's nice about it is it only has two ports. And off of those two ports, I get eight drives. So I can run eight drives off of that, um, off of that one card. And basically, the motherboard has an additional six um, SATA connections that I can use. So anyway, long story long, um, lost that drive. So what I did was I added a SSD, and SSDs have gotten really cheap. So uh, I got a Kingston A400 uh, 128 gig SSD and I put that in place of my boot drive. So now, I'm no longer booting from a USB key. I'm gonna go out there and say, pretty much unless you have to, I would install FreeNAS to a real hard drive. So that means like an SSD, but what I would suggest is do not get something gigantic because it's only going to be holding the operating system of FreeNAS. So it's not gonna really do anything else for you. Now, alternatively, what I'm thinking about doing, cause I picked up a 248, 240 gig SSD as well for like 29 bucks. Um, I'm thinking of adding that second SSD as a cache drive 
for the FreeNAS server. And what that does is basically almost like RAM, it's, you're able to cache the things that are being written to the server so you can cache them on a faster hard drive and then write those things to the pools that they need to be written to um, and have less of a chance of, of, um, of data corruption or things of that nature. So I say all that to, this, to say this, I went and I reinstalled FreeNAS, FreeNAS was running fine, and then I went into services to start up SMB. I wanted it to run Samba. Samba wouldn't run. I click on Samba and every time I clicked on it, it would say not started, not started, not started. So this has been a bug um, in 11.2. So I'm going to show you how to get past that bug. So what you want to do, and I, and I, prefer, I prefer Bitvice. So you want to use something like Bitvice some way to SSH into your machine. So I turned on SSH and then here under actions, under configure, I, I uh, checked login as root with password. I wanted to be able to do this as root, right? So um, with this, what I did was I log in. So log in right here. And the reason why I like Bitvice is because it gives you a graphical SFTP um, browser. So where you want to go is here. So I'm going to go back down and I'm going to go into Ver database Samba 4 private and then this msg.soc so this message.soc this is the problem. If you try to inst if you try to turn on Samba and Samba doesn't want to um, to initialize, this is the issue. And the issue is a permissions issue. So if I right click on this and go to properties, I can then go to permissions. So you'll see in here that I have, I have a um, permission of 700. So it's read, write and execute. This is the proper permission. If you come in here and the permission is set to 755, this is the wrong permission and Samba will not start. So the permissions have to be set to 700, right? So you have to set this to 700. So if you do that, set it to 700, hit OK. I'm not going to do it now because I've already done it. You hit OK and then um, go back into FreeNAS here and let's go to services and then go to Samba and click on Samba. Samba will run. So you'll then be able to have your Samba uh, running on your FreeNAS box. Now, if you if you don't use Samba, Samba is Windows file sharing. So if you look at your computer and go to like your network, you'll see I can see all the computers on my network and there's my media, there's my PHX Media NAS box, which is this FreeNAS box here. So that allows it to show, that allows it to, to for me to be able to make shares so I can make shared folders that, um, are sitting on this computer and they're basically network shares. Now, there's something else. If you're using Windows 10, if you use Windows 10 and you're doing a brand new installation of Windows 10, there is a there is another, it's not a bug, it's just a feature that's turned off. And I don't know why they did this. But if you go to if you if you have your network set up, if you have multiple if you have multiple computers in your house and you can't see some of those computers, first of all, you want to make sure that your network has um, discovery turned on, has network discovery turned on. Usually it will. If it doesn't, then activate network discovery. The other thing is you might not see this free NAS box show up. If that's happening, you want to go to your to Windows and I'm going to say turn like turn actually it's Windows so that's how I start typing win and I'm gonna look for this right here in control panel so this is in the control panel but it's turn Windows features on or off so when I open that up you'll see that there is a SMB 1.0 sys file share support this will be deactivated by default now with Windows. I, I don't know why they decided to do this, but they did. So you wouldn't be able to see your network shares. Like it, 
you could still get to them. You could type in the you could actually type in the address to that particular share. So like if I wanted to, I could come in here and type in the actual, you know, IP address of that share and be able to get to it. You see it brings up the stuff and it's showing me, you know, login whatever. The issue is is that I don't like having to do that all the time. I want that to just to show up in here as a regular computer. So if you turn on the client, you don't have to turn on the server, turn on the client and then hit OK and restart your machine. When you go back into your network, it should show all of the machines that are connected to your network. That was a bug that I was dealing with and I was just like, why aren't my why aren't my other computers on my network showing up? Because I've got probably 10 computers within my home network that should be showing up and they're not so that was the issue the issue is is that windows microsoft basically disabled samba um and you don't you didn't have access to it well you have access to it but it just wasn't on by default so hopefully if you have encountered either one of those issues whether your samba is not working or you know you can't see your your free nas drive on the network then that's those are the issues those are things that you would have to kind of go through and hopefully that was useful to you um i will be posting another video i'm probably going to post it by sunday i'm trying to get like i say i always say this i'm trying to get better about posting videos but the video that i'm going to work work with on sunday is really going to be on cord cutting so a lot of people have asked me questions about cutting the cord and using services outside of having traditional like comcast or AT&T or whoever you have for your television provider. Uh, I currently do not have any of those. I use PlayStation View, which I think is phenomenal. Um, I'm able to, I have cloud-based DVR and all these great things. And I, I like using Kodi. And there is an official plugin or an official add-on for Kodi that lets you access your PlayStation View account inside of Kodi, making it seamless. So you actually have real live television inside of Kodi. Now, because I don't believe in using any of those um, IPTV, um, those different ITP, IPTV services that all pop up around the internet, for one, they're not secure um, and they're stolen feeds, basically. Uh, I just wanted a way that I could integrate Kodi as my main media center. So I decided to go with PlayStation View. The other thing that I decided to do, because some of the builds of Kodi that, I, well, Netflix is not available on Kodi. There's not a Netflix um, add-on for Kodi. At least not anymore, not an official one. But there is a there is a piece of software called Play On, and Play On is completely legal and you are able to record Netflix shows to your own DVR. It's completely legal. It's a real company. It is not some, you know, uh, hackers doing some stuff. It is actually a real company because they actually have a cloud version of it that lets you record things to the cloud. Uh, right now they have a sale going on. If I can go to their website. I think I had it up here. Yep, there we go. So on their Play On website, get rid of Honey. So on their Play On website right now, they actually have Play On for sale. And if you buy it right now, it's 40 bucks for a lifetime um, subscription. And that gives you unlimited recordings, but you have to have the space to be able to record to. So basically you're recording to your hard drive or your NAS or wherever you want to record to. But the cool thing is, is that um, you are able to log in to play on with your um, credentials for Netflix and Hulu and Amazon and all the other streaming apps. And this gives you access to those streaming apps inside of Kodi through the play on browser. So it's not a complete one to one integration. It's a little bit clunkier, but it's cool because I don't have to because like in the living room, I have a TV that doesn't have any smart features to it. And I currently use a Roku on that television, but I, I, you know, honestly, I don't really love Roku. I don't love the interface. I don't love how restrictive that it is. So I'm probably going to replace that Roku box with a Raspberry Pi running OSMC. OSMC is a um, purpose-built version of Kodi 
for Raspberry Pi and for Windows and Mac as well, but it runs really well on a Raspberry Pi. And right now, most of the movies that I have are 1080p, so I don't need 4K support, and the TV that I have in the living room anyway is not 4K at all anyway. So if I were going to go for a real 4K player, I would either buy the Mi Box or buy the NVIDIA Shield, which are both great 4K players that support Kodi. So anyway, that's the video that I have coming up this weekend. I'm going to talk about how to set that up and how to be able to uh, get that going on your network. Like I say, once again, hopefully the information that's in this video is something that can help you. I know it was something I was racking my brain with until I sat down and thought about it and um, started to like look at the logs and stuff of FreeNAS and I was like, oh, okay, there's a permission error. So anyway, hopefully this has been helpful to you, and if it has, and you like the great content that we do here on the Dr. Media channel, then, you know, leave us a like, that like this video, and if you really like what we do on here, then subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so that you get all those notifications whenever I upload something new, which I promise, I promise, 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 it's trying to get, trying to get better about it. Just a really heavy work summer. So anyway, until next time on Digital Mutants, later.